Hello, I'm Zubair Nasi. I'm the Chairman of the Department of Medicine at the Nova Fairfax Hospital and Vice President of Research at the Nova Health System in Falls Church, Virginia. I've been asked by the editors of Journal of Hepatology to discuss our recent article entitled Impact of Interferon-Free Regimen on Clinical and Cost Outcomes for Chronic Hepatitis C e Genotype 1 Patients. I'm going to spend a few minutes discussing this paper that you can read in the current issue of uh, Journal of Hepatology. As you all know, hepatitis C is the most common cause of advanced liver disease, and at least in the United States, it is the most common indication for liver transplantation and also the most common cause of hepatocellular carcinoma. Hepatitis is also responsible for increased mortality and tremendous economic burden in the United States, Europe, and worldwide. Additionally, hepatitis C is responsible for impairment of health-related quality of life and other patient-related outcomes. As you all know that genotype 1 of hepatitis C is the most common genotype, at least in the Western world. Typically, treatment of genotype 1 hepatitis C is based on staging of liver disease, either with a biopsy or liver stiffness, and the regimens contain interferon. This strategy with inclusion of interferon has a lot of side effects, and because of these side effects and duration of treatment and relatively low efficacy, there are new interferon-free regimens that are being developed rapidly for all genotypes, including genotype 1. The aim of this study that was presented in this uh, manuscript form in this uh, issue of Journal of Hepatology was to determine the cost effectiveness of staging guided uh, uh, treatment of hepatitis C versus treat all in patients who have genotype 1 HCV with either interferon based regimen or interferon free regimens. What we did in this study is to use a decision analytic Markov model to simulate. Uh, the natural history of patients with hepatitis C genotype 1 uh, until death and compared four different strategies. The reference case, the baseline case, was treat a naive genotype 1 50-year-old individual. Transition rates were obtained from the literature. Cost data was obtained from a number of different sources including 2012 Medicare fee schedule, wholesale acquisition cost of drugs, 2012 national average drug acquisition cost in a survey of retail pharmacies that was conducted by CMS and a number of other clinical cost databases that were available. Healthy utilities and quality of life uh, was assessed using published data from patient-derived scores. Effectiveness was measured uh, in quality uh, adjusted life years or colleagues and cost-effective analysis or cost-effective uh, uh, analysis of two different regimen or three different regimen was uh, obtained using incremental cost-effectiveness ratios or ICRs. The four strategies that were looked at included strategy one which was pegolentiferon, ribavirin, and a protease inhibitor either telapavir or bersevivir with staging and only those patients who had a stage F2 to F4 were treated patients with F1 were followed. Strategy 2 basically used the same sort of approach except the treatment was all oral interferon free regimen. Again, this is all oral interferon free regimen with staging. Strategy 3 was the, f the first strategy, pegol interferon, ribavirin, and protease inhibitor, but this time without staging, meaning to treat all patients who had hepatitis C genotype 1. And finally, Sta strategy four was all oral and the on free regimen without staging. This slide shows the Markov model that depicts the natural history of hepatitis C genotype 1 patients. And as you can see, there are transition states that are depicted by different lines. And those arrows uh, uh, determine moving of one patient or cohort of patients from one state to the next state. And these transition rates were obtained from the literature. The bottom line is this, that when you look at cost effectiveness ratio, or ICR, incremental cost effectiveness ratio, all oral, treat all patients without the liver biopsy, was the most cost effective uh, strategy with incremental cost effectiveness ratio of 15,709. In fact, 
the triple therapy combination, either with staging or without staging, were dominated by this strategy. The strategy to treat all remained cost effective, even we depart even after departure from the base case assumptions using sensitivity analysis. In fact, when we replace this logic staging, meaning liver biopsy, with fiber scan, this strategy remained cost effective and they did not have any impact on the final cost effectiveness ratio. Now remember that the threshold for incremental cost effectiveness ratio is about less than fifty thousand dollar per colleagues, and the strategy that we, that we showed you is significantly lower than that strategy. So in summary, our data suggests that all oral interferon-free therapy for all genotype 1 patients reduced the number of patients developing advanced liver disease and increased life expectancy. Additionally, this strategy is the most cost-effective approach for treating genotype 1 hepatitis C patients. These findings combined with previous studies, uh, modeling studies, looking at baby boomer cohort to be screened should help us establish a potential guideline for working with the general population in terms of identifying these patients and treating patients with hepatitis C in general. Nevertheless, the efficacy and safety of all different interferon-free regimen must be established and fully confirmed in randomized clinical trials. Thanks again for your attention.